click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hi friends in the previous lecture we have discussed about the classification of polygonal based on the molecular forces and now in this topic we are going to talk about the free radical mechanism so in this topic basically we are going to learn that is how basically a polymer is been obtained from a particular monomer so that is what i am going to talk about that is let us understand the free radical mechanism for the polymerization of ethene <music> So friends, in this topic, since I am talking about the mechanism of polymerization of ethene, so in that case, basically we have to understand that is there will be multiple step. So because of this, basically we could easily prepare the polymer of an ethene. So for that, let me talk about the first step, and the name of the first step is. So basically, we are talking about the polymerization of ethene, and this is how basically we have to consider ethene, and from which basically by the polymerization process we could easily form polyethene. But this kind of process doesn't take place by its own. Obviously, we have to use certain kind of catalysts. Obviously, we have to use certain kind of initiators. So, what are initiators? Initiators are certain unstable compounds which on decomposition which can give us a radical, and because of this. free radical and because of this unstable radical obviously this will initiate the reaction and this is how basically the ethene can be converted into polyethene so in this case i am talking about the first step that is known as formation of free radical so in this case basically we are considering one of the catalyst or we could say one of the initiator and that is nothing but benzoyl peroxide so now let me make you understand that is how the reaction occurs and how basically a free radical is been produced because of the initiator so for that we have that is c6h5 c double bond o so this is what i am considering about benzoyl peroxide as an initiator so in this case we will get to know that is whenever this benzoyl peroxide if we provide a certain temperature or suppose if we provide a particular amount of heat then in this case basically this is an unstable compound so obviously this will form a particular radical so in this case the reaction would happen in such a manner that is the product that we could get is nothing but we could get that is two moles of c6h5 c double bond o o dot so this is nothing but this is a free radical and the free radical whenever a homolytic fusion has been occurred over here so obviously i should represent this symbol with a half or we could say like fish hook arrow so because of this fish hook arrow it represents that is one of the electron has that is deposited on this oxygen atom and one of the electron has deposited on this oxygen atom that is making to form that is two moles of this is known as carboxy radicals so therefore two moles of carboxy radicals has been formed but even this is very much unstable so for that we see here we see between the carbon and between this carbon atom there will be a kind of homolytic fusion and this is how basically we could find that is this carbon has its electron on it and even this carbon that is of the phenyl ring it will have electron on it so thereby this will produce that is two moles of carbon dioxide as a by product and the main product that we need because that will help to initiate the reaction is nothing but two moles of c6h5 dot that is nothing but a phenyl radical and this is the phenyl radical that will initiate the further process so this was nothing but this was the step number 1 and that is formation of free radical so this is a free radical that is been produced and now let me talk about the second step so the second step is chain initiating step so in this case we see we understand that is we have to convert the monomer that is the ethene into polyethene so but in step number 1 also we have got to know that is a formation of free radical has been taken place so in that case we see we have got that is c6h5 dot that is a phenyl radical and this is a very unstable species and obviously it will react with that is ethene that is nothing but ch2 double bond ch2 so therefore the reaction will take place in such a manner that is obviously the react that is radical is very much reactive so that's the reason that there will be formation of a larger free radical so this is basically an ethene and this is nothing but a phenyl radical so whenever this will react with this ethene one mole of ethene so obviously the product that is formed is nothing but c6h5 ch2 so now here it will be converted into ch2 dot because here also there will be kind of a homolytic fusion and this is how basically one of the electron will 
jump on this carbon atom while this electron it will go along with this radical and that is what a bond formation takes place over here that is between the phenyl ring and this ch2 so this is a bond that has been formed over here but even if you talk about this carbon atom this carbon atom at least have uh, a radical on it and that is what we can see and this is nothing but a larger radical and again it is very unstable so what will happen is this larger radical it will influence the other that is other monomers like if we talk about that is other ethene molecule and that's the case that uh, the larger radical will convert into much more bigger radical molecule and this is what the process goes on and that is what i want to talk about the third step and now let me talk about the third step So this is the third step that I am going to talk about and that is known as chain propagating step. So we understand that is in the second step we have got a product and the product is nothing but C6H5, CH2 single bond, CH2 with a dot that is a free radical and obviously this will combine with other ethene molecule and this is what CH2 double bond CH2 I have mentioned over here. So again there will be kind of larger or there would be a bigger that is free radical that would be formed because obviously this is a very unstable compound that is what we have and obviously it will attack on this carbon atom and that is what even this electron it will jump on this carbon atom and there will be homolytic fusion in such a manner that is there will be bond formation between this CH2 and this CH2 and that's the reason that the product that we could get is C6H5 CH2 CH2 and there will be bond formation over here that is ch2 and this is single bond ch2 with one electron on the carbon atom making this to be called as a bigger that is free radical so therefore this process will go on continuous and that is how basically we could obtain a polyethene but the thing is polyethene consists of ch2 ch2 as a repeating unit but what we have to do is we have to eliminate this one so that means we have to terminate in this particular reaction because in polythene we should not get c6h5 and that's the reason that i'm going to talk about the fourth step and that is nothing but terminating the reaction so the last step is chain terminating step obviously we have understood that is in step number three that is what we have got is we have got a bigger free radical molecule and this step will go on continuous and that's the reason that we have to basically terminate this reaction because unless we terminate this reaction we can't obtain polyethene so for that we can terminate the reaction by doing various methods that is by introducing impurity or by that is limiting the supply of ethene and that is how basically we can obtain polyethene there is also another method that is coupling the free radical so this is what i want to talk about that is suppose the product that we have got in step number three is nothing but c6h5 ch2 ch2 and suppose if i am mentioning in this way so this is the free radical that is what we have got and suppose we have introduced that is two moles of this free radical so obviously we understand that is the product that we could get is nothing but it will be c6h5 ch2 ch2 And again this one will be the repeating unit and that is what i am writing over here so therefore this is what we can get we can get a larger molecule that is nothing but polyethene and by limiting the supply of ethene we can easily terminate this too that is c6h5 as well as this c6h5 and that is how we can get a polyethene so this was nothing but a reaction that is how we can convert ethene into polyethene so this was nothing but a polymerization reaction as well as an addition reaction specifically if we talked about so that's it so thank you guys for watching this video i hope you have understood the mechanism behind this and i hope i will see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much